It was an extraordinary event for a woman to deliver 10 babies in a single birth, a rare occurrence that left the doctors in awe. Yet, their amazement turned to deep dread when they realized that one of the newborns wasn't actually a baby. The moment had arrived. Halima knew it. And while part of her felt relieved and excited, another part was overwhelmed, hyperventilating with anxiety. Seeking relief, she asked one of the nurses for help with breathing exercises. After the exercises, the nurse, sensing something was amiss, stayed behind and inquired about Halima's well-being. Initially, Halima was inclined to dismiss her concerns, but when she looked into the nurse's eyes and saw genuine care, she couldn't hold back her emotions. Overwhelmed, she burst into tears, unable to stop despite the nurse's comforting attempts. I'm scared, Halima said, tears streaming down her face. What if something bad happens to the babies or to me? Saying this out loud felt like a weight lifting off her chest. She had been keeping this fear inside for weeks, afraid to speak it aloud and jinx the outcome. But the fear lingered in her bones, her breath, and every thought. The nurse gently took Halima's hand and looked into her eyes. There are no guarantees in the delivery room, but I can tell you this. This clinic has seen many unique births, more than you can imagine. There will be 10 doctors and 25 paramedics in there with you, including me, all skilled and confident. We will take care of you and the babies. Halima cried again, thanking the nurse profusely. She explained that pregnancy hormones made her more emotional, causing these outbursts. The understanding nurse nodded. Other nurses joined them, and together they prepared Halima for delivery. With the support and reassurance, her fears eased, and she felt more at peace. Halima slipped into a dreamless sleep once she was sedated. History was about to take place in that delivery room, but the medics who were assembled didn't know it yet. They thought they were about to witness the birth of septuplets, which was a big deal all on its own. But it wasn't the most unique thing ever. Septuplets already existed in the world. Also, the staff at this hospital weren't caring for Halima out of ego. They weren't out to prove anything to the world except to ensure the safety of the mother and the children. In this very complicated surgery, it wasn't that the surgery itself was complicated, but there were too many variables to consider if they wanted to ensure success. Halima and her husband, Abdelkader, were originally from Timbuktu in the African country of Mali. Timbuktu was beautiful. It had electricity, clean water, and was a friendly community, but they didn't have the medical capacity to handle a case of multiple pregnancies of that magnitude. It was why Abdelkader had acted urgently when Halima's OBGYN revealed that she was pregnant with seven babies. He had contacted Mali's authorities seeking help for his wife and their unborn babies. He had prayed that they paid attention to his cry for help. It had been obvious that without outside intervention, Halima would be in a dire state. During her first trimester, Halima was extremely sick, constantly throwing up and becoming emaciated. Despite the remedies from experienced mothers in the neighborhood, nothing helped. She was bedridden, weak, and dizzy, worrying Abdelkader that he might lose her. He took care of her, ensuring she didn't strain herself. As she entered the second trimester, her symptoms improved, but carrying seven babies took a toll. Her feet swelled, she had severe back pain, and she was always sweating. Doctors in Timbuktu recommended a specialized clinic in Morocco for women with multiple pregnancies. Abdelkader, unable to afford the trip, worked hard to get help from Mali's authorities. They arranged and covered all expenses for Halima to be flown to Casablanca for treatment. Halima was 25 weeks pregnant when she was admitted to the hospital, looking exhausted and eager to give birth. The doctors, however, knew it was too early and that it could be dangerous for both her and the babies. They explained that a full-term pregnancy is usually between 38 and 40 weeks so delivering at 25 weeks would decrease the baby's chances of survival. They assured her they would make her as comfortable as possible until it was time for the babies to be born. After waiting for five weeks, the time finally came for the babies to be delivered. During the C-section, the medics discovered three more babies in Halima's belly. In total, Halima gave birth to 10 babies at once. It was incredible and beyond everyone's wildest imaginations. It was unheard of for a woman to deliver that much at a go. However, since the babies were born prematurely, they were tiny, with the smallest weighing 500 grams, which is equal to one pound. Other children were above that weight, but the heaviest didn't weigh more than one kilogram, which is a little over two pounds. 
Normal babies carried to term usually weigh between 3 to 4 kilograms. Doctors had anticipated the severe underweight of these babies and had rushed them off to the clinic's highly advanced neonatal care unit. Fortunately, only one of the babies was tagged as an emergency baby. It was the one-pound baby. He was urgently attended to and survived. They were all placed in incubators and watched over by the hospital staff round the clock. The medics were so relieved that so many babies survived. They felt immense gratitude for this good fortune because they had only expected to keep up to five of them alive with their mother, Halima. With the baby safe, the rest of the medics turned their attention to Halima, who was fighting for her life. She had suffered internal bleeding and the electrocardiogram revealed her heart rate was dropping rapidly. In the blink of an eye, it flatlined and there was a second of complete silence as everyone stared in shock. Then, a flurry of activities followed. The doctors brought the defibrillator and tried three times to resuscitate Halima before her heart rate picked up on the electrocardiogram. They swiftly operated on her and staunched the bleeding. Somewhere in the middle of surgery, she slipped into a coma. The doctor's hands were tied. They had done all they could. The rest was up to God. Abdulkader was devastated when he learned of Halima's condition. She lay unconscious, and the uncertainty of her waking weighed heavily on him. Despite his tough exterior from years as a soldier, he was deeply emotional and couldn't imagine losing her. He knelt by her bedside, holding her hand, pleading for her to wake up. His prayers went unanswered, but feeling her warmth and pulse gave him some comfort. He stayed by her side, reminiscing about the day they met. Halima had bravely helped him when he was injured, and they eventually fell in love and married. Abdul Kader valued her education and encouraged her to continue her studies, unlike many others in his position. A year after they got married, Halima and Abdul Kader welcomed their first child, a daughter. When she turned one, they discovered they were expecting again. However, their joy turned to concern when a scan revealed multiple pregnancies. This brought many challenges, especially the high cost of medical care for the babies. Abdul Kader reached out to Mali's Ministry of Health and Social Development for help. They intervened and provided financial assistance, but it came with a price. Details of Halima's delivery and the baby's condition were made public, and the media learned about Halima's unconscious state and the baby's being in the incubator. Abdul Kader needed Halima to survive after their journey together. Three days after giving birth, Halima woke up and Abdul Kader, by her side, helped her sit up and gave her water. Later, in a wheelchair, he took her to see their babies, nine in total, four boys, and five girls. Sadly, one was not viable. Despite this, the family received overwhelming support and over a million dollars in donations, enough to cover their expenses for the foreseeable future. Three months after delivery, Halima confessed to a reporter that she always desired a big family since she was an only child and wasn't against having more children, even though her hands were jam-packed. The children went through six liters of milk and 100 diapers a day. The family moved into an apartment in Morocco to stay close to the clinic for monitoring. They returned to Mali 19 months after the children were born. Many of the babies were crawling, and some would even walk if they held onto something. They were all healthy. Halima and her babies were awarded the Guinness World Record for the most babies in a single birth. The previous record holder was Nadia Suleiman, known as Octomom who had eight babies in 2009 through IVF. Halima's birth was natural, and she set the record in May 2021, becoming the world's first mother of known uplets.